Hey collectors, welcome to Star Wars Collected. I'm Jonathan. Today we're going to be unboxing and reviewing the new Hasbro Black Series Death Watch helmet. We're also going to be comparing it to other Black Series helmets that are Mandalorians, uh, as well as my EFX Boba Fett helmet. I pre-ordered mine through GameStop. I know some people have had some issues with GameStop in the past. They've actually been super reliable for me. I've uh, done quite a few orders through them. A lot of Black Series stuff actually. Uh, these helmets, uh, actually I think I've gotten Ooh, I don't know, maybe half a dozen uh, X-Wing helmets, whether they are Luke or they are Wedge through them. Uh, so they've always delivered for me. Uh, this is, as of right now, uh, the second to last Mandalorian helmet that I have on pre-order. I actually have the um, Boba Fett reforged one on order, I believe, through Amazon. Uh, so that will be the next one that comes. But let's take a look at this one that we have here. Uh, so this one actually came in what kind of looks like a Hasbro box. That doesn't always happen for me. So that's a little stuck out as a little unusual for me. And we'll pull it out here. So this helmet came with, I don't know if I would say controversy, but a little bit of uh, eyebrows uh, raised um, because this is yet another repaint of a helmet that they've made. So they first gave us the Boba Fett helmet from Black Series, uh, which is really popular and I'm really glad they did it uh, because a lot of people love Boba Fett and being able to have his helmet looking so good uh, was just great for the community. I ended up getting that one. I found the color to be too gray uh, instead of being the green color that I think of when I think of Boba Fett. Uh, and unfortunately because of that, uh, it just wasn't quite right for me. So I do still have it in my collection, but it did uh, spur me to go ahead and buy the EFX version, which we'll look at later. But to this guy right here, so Death Watch helmet, we first see those in the Clone Wars, uh, and then we do see them in a flashback scene for the Mandalorian as well. Uh, so they are showing up uh, a couple different places, but the only time I've ever seen one in live action would be the Mandalorian. One thing that I was thinking about before I unboxed this was that in the Clone Wars, the Death Watch helmets are all very, uh, very much the same, the same, similar in color format. They have uh, shades of blue and some gray and some black, but they all have kind of the same thing. But then you get to the Mandalorian and you're looking at the armorer and the heavy Mandalorian um, and that whole clan, uh, which are, you know, children of the watch as Bo-Katan called them. Uh, and their armor is super diverse and, and different. And it just makes me wonder, why is that the case? Uh, although if you do think about the the heavy Mandalorian that he's been calling, the one that's voiced by Jon Favreau, uh, his colors are uh, sort of these Death Watch colors and his last name is Vizsla. So he is part of the House of Vizsla, just like Pre Vizsla was. So uh, looking at the box here, we have, uh, you know, kind of the, what we've known and what we've become to expecting from Hasbro. So we have the box here with sort of this odd little notch taken out of it, but that's kind of a cool different style design there. We have the profile of the box in a couple different ways here, a couple different pictures. Uh, they do this sort of thing on the figures, which I don't collect, but I, I do recognize from that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, unlike the figures, as far as I can tell, uh, the figures you can sometimes get a little bit of hint on what might be coming next because they'll have their legs or their gun or something like that sticking off on one side here because when you put them all together they form a shape. That is not what they do here on the helmets. Uh, so I imagine that this helmet will look very, very similar to the others but let's take a look and see how they did with the paint job and bringing this piece to life. So a little bit of cardboard here. This little flap is in almost all of the Black Series helmets as of late. We have a little bit of documentation here. Nothing too intriguing. We do have a little booklet, Mandalorian Death Watch. And this is telling us how to install batteries and how to install the stock on the side of the helmet and adjust the uh, headband at the top if you want to wear it. So, uh, you know, if I was giving you guys a, uh, a full review, I would put batteries in it and do the voice changing stuff, but I don't really go in for that. I'm, I'm not putting it on my head and doing that and I keep batteries out of them so that they don't corrode. Uh, so I'm going to give it to you from the more, you know, sitting on the shelf, artistic representation of a prop type perspective. So we're going to try to get it out of here. It seems like it's uh, kind of taped in here. Let's see. So I'm actually going to lift out, I guess this entire cardboard insert is what it wants to do right now because it seems to be attached to the bottom. <clears throat> Let's 
It is attached to the bottom. I think this is the first Black Series helmet that I recall ever having to uh, undo little twist ties or something like that on. Uh, I wonder if they had issues with other ones bouncing around too much and getting hurt, or maybe I'm just misremembering some of the other Mandalorian helmets. All right, so those are gone. Put it back upright, okay. And still a little bit of resistance here. We'll be taped in, we're taped in. Guys, they have uh, changed how they put these in here. I feel like in the past, they've all just sort of like fallen right out. And but this one is uh, definitely attached more than others. Okay, finally, we're getting it out. Okay, so we have the helmet here. In the bottom is the stock. So that's where it is. Okay, let's start with the stock here just because it's out. Uh, so similar or the same to the other one uh, that we've had before. Has a locking mechanism here. You click the button and that allows it to fold down. They've done a good job with this stock. It is uh, plastic, it's not aluminum, but uh, you don't, I don't think you really know that to look at it. Um, and they've done a good job with this deco on here. This looks like a really good mud and dirt. I would love to have seen a treatment like this uh, on the Luke Skywalker helmet or the Wedge Antilles helmet, uh, something that's a little bit stronger with the dirt application. They've done a good job at not only kind of dirting this up, but also kind of putting in what looks like scratches on that. So that's cool. Uh, and for playability, if you want to play with the thing, this little piece right here does pop out, slide out, and it gives you like a little range finder. If you have batteries in, these little lights will blink, which is all very cool. Uh, but like I said, we won't be doing that for mine. So let's go ahead here and open this guy up. One thing that Black Series I think has changed recently that I really appreciate is that they have done an excellent job at filling out the inside of these helmets. Um, you know, it's still kind of molded in there. It's maybe not the, the most perfect and beautiful looking thing you've ever seen, but that's, that's quite, a bit of, quite a bit of detail. They've got a lot of cool vents and these little, uh, these little orange pads, which are, um, you know, actually real pads. There's actually like a little bit of air in those. Um, and they've got its little pins up here. So, uh, you know, it made it look much more realistic in there. And of course, they've got that adjustable hard hat liner that you see in a lot of helmets. Okay, so moving around to the outside here, this is not glossy in any way, uh, which I appreciate. And has, just trying to make sure that some of these scratches are actually intentional. I'm not sure if they are or not. I've got some pretty serious scratches right here. So uh, that is not below the paint though. So uh, either it's a very realistic looking uh, deco or mine's a little scratched up, uh, but it looks kind of fine. So if you have one of these as well, let me know if this scratch right here uh, is on yours. I'd be interested to know. I don't really care. It looks good to me. Um, and we move around to the front here. So like I said, it's not glossy uh, and it does feel like it has a different finish than even the Boba Fett one does. Um, when I say glossy, I'm referencing it against the um, the prototype vet, which actually, now that I think about it, may not be so much glossy as much as it just feels a little bit smoother than what this one is. Um, we will see when we get them out, but there is sort of a pocking, shall we say, that, that is sort of through the visor area here. Uh, and my guess is that's exactly the same as what we have on the prototype one uh, and exactly as what we have on Boba Fett, but we will see when we get there. They've done a good job with the color variations. It is perhaps, I would say it is subdued compared to what you would expect uh, out of the Clone Wars era. Uh, originally, I actually bought two of the prototype versions because my plan was to repaint one of them in the uh, Death Watch paint job. And every example I would see of uh, someone else doing another fan doing one, it'd be so much more bright and vibrant uh, than this one. But right before I ordered this one, I did look up the Mandalorian live action shots, just to get an idea of what color palette they were looking at. And I would say it actually was closer to this. Um, so, you know, sitting on a shelf, maybe if it was just a little bit brighter, it would pop just a little bit more, but I don't feel like this is an inaccurate color. Uh, we've got good looking coin slots back here. And actually by having a little bit of this inner uh, stuff on the inside, you get a little bit of detail poking, po uh, poking through here. So that's kind of nice to see. Uh, the only thing I'm seeing that I don't like right off the bat, and it's a pretty easy fix, is that this slot right here 
It does not have any sort of dirt or anything inside of it. Uh, and for those of you who have made your own helmets, and like to do weathering and things like that, you know that the cracks and crevices are where you're going to always especially find a lot of dirt. So to see that when the light hits it and it is sort of a bright poppy blue, similar to what this is down inside that crack, that would be my only criticism of it uh, that I'm seeing right now. Uh, but they have done a good job at, uh, you know, not only getting this cheek color in here uh, contrasted, but there's this like stripe that goes in here, which is another shade of color. Uh, they've done a good job at hitting that too. So uh, what we're going to do now is uh, I'll go ahead and put the stock on here. I don't want to hurt the thing. There we go. Okay. So that's on. Uh, so you can see that if I click the button here, that comes down. I wish I wish it didn't bounce. It's very not sexy if this was on a real, uh, you know, real bounty hunter walking up to you and he's, you know, trying to intimidate you. And then uh, this little thing comes down and boing. Uh, it wouldn't be the most intimidating thing in the world, but uh, you know, what are you gonna do? So, uh, you know, overall it looks really cool. Uh, gotta love a Mando helmet, right? I mean, I think most of us fell in love with Mandalorians first because we fell in love with Boba Fett. Boba Fett doesn't really do a whole lot. He just looks so damn cool. Uh, one thing that I flipped one over here that I'm noticing now is that that same kind of bright blue is on the bottom edge here. I don't blame Hasbro for not figuring out how to add a little bit of deco to that area, but uh, that might be something that I need to fix uh, in the future. But you know, honestly, if it's sitting on a shelf or on a stand or something like that, no one's gonna notice that. So uh, without further ado, <laughs> I will go ahead and grab uh, my other Mando helmets. We'll put them all together. We'll take a look at them. All right, collectors. So we have all four of the Black Series Mandalorian helmets that you can currently purchase right now. Uh, we have Boba Fett, uh, Prototype Boba Fett, and then we have the Mandalorian, Din Djarin, uh, and then the, now the Death Watch helmet. So, uh, you know, basically what I thought was the case was correct, that they have basically just reused the same mold uh, you know, three times to make these, uh, with the exception of this one does have a dent in it, and they did take the dent out for the other two. I applaud them for doing that because they very well could have just painted this one white and, you know, painted this, these colors and left the dent in there. And if they were actually selling it to kids, kids wouldn't notice, they wouldn't care. So I do appreciate that they at least reworked that part of it. Um, I would say that this stock on this one looks so much better than this one. This one's completely clean. And then when you have sort of all these little, you know, marks all over the body, uh, it, uh, you know, it makes a difference when that looks all clean and this does not. So I would applaud them for their change in that too. Uh, what I would love to have seen was a little bit more of this sort of, uh, you know, dirt and grime maybe applied to Boba Fett's helmet here because while it is all sort of pocked up and has little dents and scratches and stuff like that, it does not look particularly dirty. Um, so that is kind of a cool thing. Um, I kept using the word glossy earlier. It's not what really what I meant. I meant really more smooth. So this is very smooth, uh, even though it is sort of a matte, maybe satin finish on that, uh, where this has some surface texture to it. It's still, you know, fairly smooth, but as you run your fingers across it, it does have a surface texture to it. And uh, one thing that a lot of people have been noticing, you know, people did not like that the prototype film helmet uh, had all these little pock marks in it. The prototype helmet comes from, you know, early versions of Boba Fett, uh, and especially some test footage and stuff like that, uh, where it was, you know, a very clean sort of super stormtrooper type look. So <clears throat> that concept version would not have had those things in there. Uh, and this is definitely the same places where, where I rub a mark here, rub a mark there, uh, but they do look a little different. I don't know if it's just the, the, the way that this is finished. For some reason, they stand out a little bit more on the prototype one than they do on the Death Watch one, which is kind of unfortunate because if you really think about it, we'd rather have this one be a little bit cleaner. The last comparison we'll do here is actually to my EFX helmet. Um, you know, like I said earlier, I, I bought the Black Series Boba Fett one. I was super excited about it, sat on my shelf for a little while, but the, the color just was too gray, too, uh, I don't know, army, dark green, um, when it really should be more of an olive color. Uh, so, you know, even though there's a difference, obviously in price and stuff like that, um, Boba Fett's such an iconic character. It's kind of like having a really good quality Darth Vader helmet on your shelf. I think it's just worth the investment. Uh, a couple things that I'll point out about this one that I really like. I do like that it has a metal stock, uh, as well as some pieces around here that just uh, are done a little bit more uh, as you would expect it. Uh, one thing the Black Series does better, I think, is the interior because the EFX version does not have any sort of built-out interior to speak of 
uh, nothing to be proud of in there. Um, and I would say the detailing on this is better. Uh, you have more spatters and, and little details here and there. But if anything, I would say that uh, it sort of makes this stand out even more because while this is better, uh, it's not, you know, four times the price better. Uh, so I think, you know, if, if you're in the market and you can still find one of these, uh, this is a great Boba Fett helmet to have on your shelf. Uh, and that kind of speaks to why all these other Mandalorian helmets are also great ones to have on your shelf. They've done a really good job with these. Uh, and I'm glad that I add yet another one into my collection. And I'm looking forward to having the, you know, book of Boba Fett version of it here within a few months. All right, collectors, there you have it. This is my review and unboxing of the Death Watch helmet from Hasbro Black Series. I think it's a solid piece. If you've enjoyed any of the other ones, if you have any of the other ones in your collection, or if you've been looking for a way to add a Mandalorian helmet, I think this is a solid one to go with. I think the paint uh, application is really good. I love what they've done with the aluminum here. It makes it look so much more real. Uh, and I kind of like the subdued colors on it. So. Uh, I think there's a lot of cool Black Series helmets out there. I know people are getting a little bit tired of the Hasbro repaints here and there. I know we all really want a Phase 1 and a Phase 2 Clone Trooper, maybe a Bo-Katan, TIE Pilot helmet. If they don't give us a Scout Trooper for Return of the Jedi uh, anniversary, there's going to be a riot. Uh, but solid piece. I love it. Uh, I would add it to your collection as well. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a like. If you like videos like this, please subscribe. This channel is growing super fast. It's because of Star Wars collectors like you who are uh, enjoying looking at this content and sharing their love of collecting Star Wars with me. So uh, have a great day and I'll see you later.